You are listening to the Think Brick Australia podcast. Think Brick Australia represents the clay, brick and paver manufacturers of Australia. Brick by Brick, our podcast will discuss technical information and architectural case studies with special guests. I'm your host, Elizabeth McIntyre, the CEO of Think Brick Australia. On today's podcast, we are going to have a little bit of a chat about what happens to quarries after we don't need them anymore. And it's my great pleasure to welcome to our podcast today for the first time, Rahul Ellingoven. Welcome, Rahul. Thanks for having me, Elizabeth. Rahul's been with us um, as part of our technical team for a little over six months and nearly about to graduate from university. And we're going to talk a little bit about quarries. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with obviously clay is a material that we get out of the ground and just talk us through a little bit about that process, Mm -hmm. what happens during it. Yeah, so with bricks, they're made from clay, right? Mm -hmm. And clay is one of the most abundant materials on earth, one of the most abundant naturally occurring materials, which makes it an extremely sustainable process. And the process itself is essentially you just dig a big hole in the ground using some sort of excavation equipment and then you essentially transition that material from the quarry to the brick working plant where Mm -hmm. it's essentially converted into your brick product. Yeah and we've had all that sort of manufacturing process that Mm -hmm. in our past sort of episodes. So how long does a quarry normally operate for? Yeah great question. Quarries themselves could last for upwards of 50 to 100 years sometimes even longer. Wow. It all depends on how much of the resource itself exists underlying that specific site for example so once those resources are exhausted that's when the clay pit can start being slowly redeveloped into a different purpose okay so what we're going to talk about today is the rehabilitation of that Mm -hmm. and so what's sort of one of the first things that happens once we start rehabilitating Mm -hmm. the clay pit yeah so once the clay from a certain portion of a site is completely exhausted Mm -hmm. the owners of the quarry can slowly start redeveloping the site so when you first get the permit for the quarry what would actually happen is that you'd have to submit a development proposal through which you would actually specify what type of development would have to occur. Mm -hmm. So, For example, you could apply for it being converted into a park or a water storage facility. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you'd be able to, over time, slowly redevelop the quarry. Okay. And then I guess, what are some of the ways, Raul, that we could redevelop the old clay pit? So some abandoned pits have been used for a great variety of purposes. Sometimes they're used for agriculture. So you could actually, once the soil is completely rehabilitated and any of the elements are completely leached away from the soil, then you could use it for agricultural purposes. You could also use it to store resources. Mm -hmm. And um, over time, it could even be converted into community tourism spots. Yeah, right. And and we have seen, I think, some of those in Victoria. Mm -hmm. What sort of um, some other ways that we could use these quarries for flood retention or... Mm -hmm water supply storage? Yeah, so as cities grow bigger and bigger, there's a greater portion of the city that becomes impermeable with Mm -hmm. the surfaces and that water runoff tends to build up, right? So a way that developers could reallocate this water is through converting a local clay pit into a storage facility for flood retention water. Because the digging's already been done, right? exactly. (laughs) All right, and then we're looking here for sort of flood retention and then I guess we can also use it to store water in a reservoir capacity. Yeah, since clay is a naturally occurring material, there isn't any toxins within the pit itself, so you could use the area to store your clean water. So Rural, we've obviously talked about water storage. What are some other uses? Yeah, so as land gets developed over time, you're going to have less and less space for storing your waste. Mm -hmm. So convenient means of storing your waste is on an old clay quarry pit. Mm -hmm. And finally, we did mention it before, but I know a lot of our clay pits have been turned into sort Mm -hmm. of recreational facilities. Mm -hmm. Describe those for me. Yeah, so often they can be transformed into urban parks which offer a range of recreation activities. You could have pools, basketball courts, parks, swing sets for kids, and it often helps boost tourism for your local community or local councils. Okay, Raul, let's talk about an example here in Australia and, in fact, in our home state, New South Wales and in Sydney. Can you describe the brick pit 
ring walk. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> but yeah, so a long time ago, back mm. in 1911, the New South Wales government established the Brickworks, where they used a quarry to support the demand for local housing. Because mm-hmm. obviously bricks are used for a large portion of residential homes. Yeah. And this is out near Homebush, right? Yes, out mm. near Homebush, exactly. And... In doing so, over time, obviously the resource was slowly exhausted. Mm -hmm. And upon coming to the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games, the local government were thinking of ways to redevelop this area. But interestingly enough, as preliminary work was starting to begin on essentially closing down the quarry, they found 300 small frogs. And these frogs at the time were actually an endangered species. Oh, wow. So they halted all the construction and instead they converted it into this elevated ring walk which you could now visit if you come by to Sydney. So the ring walk itself is obviously preserving the habitat of the endangered green and golden bell frog. It's elevated 18.5 metres above ground. So it's a pretty interesting walk. And then as you walk by, you can see little snippets of how the quarry used to be. So the quarry life, which is quite interesting. And the frogs are still there croaking yes, away. Yes, the frogs are there and healthy. <laughs> yeah. And I think, do you know what? I do believe that Neil Durback and a couple of other architects we've had on our podcast did mm-hmm. work on that just in time for the Sydney Olympic Games. Mm. Well, just a question. I mean, we've talked a lot about resources being exhausted, but mm. typically how many bricks do come out of a quarry? Yeah, so for in this case, the quarry that was out in Homebush, Mm -hmm. we had an estimated of 3 billion bricks that were produced at the brick pit over its 60-year design life. Wow, that's a long time. And so many Sydney houses were actually built using the bricks coming out of this area. Yeah, and then what about if we go to places, I think maybe down south, maybe in Melbourne, any examples down there of how many bricks were taken out of a quarry? Yeah, so down in Melbourne, we have All Nations Park in Northcote, Mm -hmm. and it's a popular park, and many people walking through the park would have never realised it used to be a quarry. And within that quarry, 4 million bricks per month were produced using clay from the local quarry. Wow, and that nearly went for 100 years, is that Mm -hmm. right? And and so over 4 million bricks a month. A month, yeah. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And now it's a fabulous recreational park. And how many visitors go there every year? Yeah, it's a tourist attraction now attracting upwards of 750,000 people per year. Well, look, Raul, thank you so much. And just to recap, I think the message here today is that Clay is one of our most abundant natural Mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm. But what we learn about clay is that not only is it used to build houses and buildings, Mm -hmm. but also after that resource is exhausted, Mm -hmm. that area can still be reused in all of these different ways that we've described, from water retention to Mm -hmm. storage to recreational use and even for some waste management. Mm -hmm. But the most popular thing out of all of that, I think, is what it can do to create those recreational spaces for the community. Yeah, exactly. It's such a sustainable practice, the extraction of clay and producing bricks themselves. That sometimes people overlook the fact that bricks themselves over the entirety of its lifespan is an extremely environmentally friendly product. Yeah, and that yeah. even when you decide to reuse them from a house, you could still reuse them to build another one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> bricks themselves are extremely recyclable, yeah. which is great. Well, well, thank you for being a part of the podcast today and well, for everything you contribute to our associations. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Elizabeth. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please follow, rate and review our podcast. We are always looking for new ways to think brick. If you have an idea of what you'd like to hear about, there's a link in our show notes to let us know.